Shalom. Kahalim la Yahweh. Bahashim Yahweh Shai. Bahashim Rakwa Kadash. Our praises be to the Most High Yahweh. In the name of His Son and our Lord and Savior Yahweh Shai. Much respect and honor to the brothers that are doing the work in truth and sincerity, risking their lives and freedom to do so, and pushing this gospel throughout the four corners of the earth. Salutations to the hopeful elect that are scattered abroad. Double honor and respect to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone. <clears throat> Coming back at you with another lesson. Evil is sown. Evil is sown. So I want to go briefly into this lesson tonight and talk about what we're seeing around the world today. And this is all based on opinion, crit critique, or criticism, opinions, and non-expert perspectives. And this is not any medical advice or anything of that nature. So before I get started, <coughs> fair use. <coughs> Copyright disclaimer under Section 107 of the Copyright Act of 1976. Allowance is made for fair use for purposes such as criticism, comment, news, reporting, teaching, scholarship, education, and research. Fair use is a use permitted by copyright statute that might otherwise be infringing. <laughs> so I want to go into this lesson here. There's a short video, and I'll get to the video shortly. But I want to go here first. Let's go to... <clears throat> second Ezra 6 second Ezra chapter 6 verse 22 let's go to 21 and the children of a year old shall speak with their voices the women with child shall bring forth untimely children of three or four months old and they shall live and be raised up. So we're living in a time where everything is out of balance, out of course. <clears throat> so nature is being interrupted or disrupted because of the rulers on the earth right now. <clears throat> Let's go here to verse 22. Suddenly shall the sown places appear unsown. The full storehouses shall suddenly be found empty. So we're going to see scourges for amendment or corrections being, being executed on the earth. Judgments going forth. <coughs> Why? Because the Lord is going to bring everything back into balance on the earth. Through righteousness. Let's go to verse 24. Second Ezra 6 and 23. And the trumpet shall give a sound, which when every man heareth, they shall be suddenly afraid. So um, Yahweh Shai is going to come on the scene. Where the or right in the midst of societal economic collapse. Yahweh Shai is going to appear. The Lord is coming. And we're seeing all the signs and all of the pieces that are in place for his return. We'll read about it. Verse 24. At that time shall friends fight one against another like enemies, and the earth shall stand in fear with those that dwell therein. The springs of the fountains shall stand still, and in three hours they shall not run. 
So we read about these storehouses shall be suddenly found empty. So we're entering into a period of food shortages. The trucks can stop running for three days and already that creates scarcity on our um, grocery shelves. In one week, the entire nation will start to suffer. And then in just about a month's time, we can see fighting erupting around the major city areas in just one month. And in 90 days, all hell can break loose, which really, really, time is speeding up. So we can see these events just rapidly increase or get worse within a two weeks time. <clears throat> At that time, shall friends fight one against another like enemies, and the earth shall stand in fear with those that dwell therein. The springs of the fountain shall stand still, and in three hours they shall not run. Now, imagine trying to implement a draft. And a nation that's mandating this can't even put food on the, on the shelves. But yet they're saying your son or your daughter may be drafted. Imagine that. Water is scarce. There's a grid shut down. And now they want to mandate digital tracking and surveillance devices to be mandated, to be put into one another, if you will. Just imagine the chaos that would cause and then trying to rectify it by putting everybody into the grid permanently pursuant to Revelation 13, 16 on down. All hell would break loose. Whosoever remaineth from all these that I have told thee shall escape and see my salvation and the end of your world. <laughs> so Yahweh Shai is going to come for a remnant, those that escape the judgments, some to the sword, some to the captivity or internment facilities, some to the beasts of the field, which are not only animals, but people, ungodly people. Whosoever remaining from all these that I have told thee shall escape and see my salvation and the end of your world. And the men that are received shall see it who have not tasted death from their birth and the heart of the inhabitants shall be changed and turned into another meaning. So that is for the elect that's going to receive those changes and inherit the kingdom. For evil shall be put out and deceit shall be quenched. So the end of the eon or the age of Edom signifies the birth of Jacob, immortality. No more sickness and death and mourning. No more wars. Armageddon or the Third World War is going to usher in the war to end all wars in which the Lord is going to show up on the scene and save his remnant elect. This is why evil is being put out. As for faith, it shall flourish Corruption shall be overcome, and the truth, which had been so long without fruit, shall be declared. So the truth is being presented right now by the mouthpiece of the Lord, but the physical flesh or the manifestation and embodiment of wisdom is going to appear. Yahweh Shai said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. 
So he's going to physically appear as well. Let's go ahead and get that. Let's go to John 14. <clears throat> Look at John chapter 14. <clears throat> Let's go to verse 5. Thomas saith unto him, Lord, we know not whither thou goest, and how can we know the way? Yahweh saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. So he's going to physically make his presence known. And right now he's with us in spirit. <clears throat> Second Ezra 6. Now, when I lost my place, yeah, right here. As for faith, it shall flourish, corruption shall be overcome, and the truth, which have been so long without fruit, shall be declared. Let's go to Hosea 10 and 12. <laughs> so the fruit of the kingdom is going to be Increase, multiply the house of Israel, the harvest of the Lord being delivered at the end of the world. At a set time and date where Yahweh Shai is going to appear on the scene. <clears throat> Let's go to Hosea 10, verse 12. So to yourselves in righteousness. Reap in mercy, break up your fallow ground, for it is time to seek the Lord till he come and righteousness reign upon you. See, that's beautiful. So the Lord is our righteousness, the truth, the way. <clears throat> he is the beginning that's going to sit on the throne of David. Let's read that again. <clears throat> Hosea 10 and 12. Sow to yourselves in righteousness, reap in mercy, break up your fallow ground, for it is time to seek the Lord till he come and rain righteousness upon you. That fallow ground is our mind. <clears throat> so this truth should be Deeply planted into our heart, our mind, or in Hebrew, lob. Verse 13, ye have plowed wickedness, ye have plowed wickedness, ye have reaped iniquity, ye have eaten the fruit of lies, because thou didst trust in thy way, in the multitude of thy mighty men. So Israel has a history of trying to obtain their own righteousness, absent from the will of Yahweh Bahashem, Yahweh Shai. So we are really drinking our own poison, if you will, because we went off. So now we're suffering at the hands of those heathen gods that we decided to serve. Now we were serving our enemies because we chose their gods. But Yahweh Shai is going to put everything back into its rightful place. <laughs> Second Ezra 6 and 27. For evil shall be put out and deceit shall be quenched. As for faith, it shall flourish. Corruption shall be overcome. And the truth, which hath been so long without fruit, shall be declared. So the kingdom is going to be established under the Lord's first fruits. <clears throat> Let's get that one real quick, and then we'll play the video. <clears throat> Let's go to... 1 Corinthians 15. <clears throat> 
1 Corinthians 15, verse 20. But now, but now is Hamashiach risen from the dead and become the first fruits of them that slept. So Yahweh Shai starts the order, followed by his government. He's setting up. For since by man came death, by man came also the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all die, even so in Hamashiach shall all be made alive. This is that new meaning. Death is being swallowed up in victory. Evil is being uprooted or plucked up, put out. The wicked. <coughs> And death is going to be converted over to immortality for the Lord's elect of Israel. But every man in his own order, Hamashiach, the first fruits, afterward, they that are Hamashiachs at his coming. We read about his coming. <clears throat> then cometh the end. Esau is the end of this age of wickedness. Jacob is the beginning of it that followeth. <clears throat> then cometh the end when he shall have delivered up the kingdom to God, even the Father, when he shall have put down all rule and all authority and power. So this is the rebirth of a righteous kingdom. So King Solomon is picking up the pieces of where he left off, repairing the breach, fixing everything that is broken because sin entered into the world under Adam, the flesh. For he must reign till he have put all enemies under his feet. The last enemy that shall be destroyed is death. So death is going to be conquered and the wicked shall be conquered. Let's play the video. fucking tired man i am tired of the shit and i hope you guys are too i mean because that's what it's going to take it's really going to take people just being fed up with the way things are i mean the whole world's full of fucking poison by design they poison our fucking water they poison our food on purpose they poison our fucking skies even man we can't even have a clear day anymore because they spray the sky full of this shit i mean it's all over the place. Everywhere. Are you fucking tired of it yet? Are you tired of them making you sick? A fucking medical system that keeps people sick? Are you tired of a system that allows full-grown men to say they're women so that they can shower with little girls? I mean, is this really the legacy we want to leave for our children? God, if you would have asked me 10 years ago if this shit would be going on, if they would be reducing, like, pedophiles' sentences and stuff and letting them out of prison and letting them out of jail and everything, I would have, I would have told you you're fucking crazy. Because the one thing America used to stand on was don't fuck with our kids. But now they've infiltrated our schools with all these left-leaning fucking crazy-ass teachers that tell your kids it's okay okay to transition and tell them it's okay to be confused and confuse them further by oh what are your pronouns my pronouns are blah 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 i mean we really fucking stand for this shit we we tolerate it and we wonder why the world is so fucked up we wonder why the world is so fucked up when we don't do a fucking thing about it i mean there's gonna come a time where you can't sit on the sidelines anymore. There's gonna come a time where it's gonna be sink or swim, fight or flight. 
And that time is rapidly approaching, in my view. Let's go here. So yeah, this is absolutely ridiculous. Absolutely ridiculous. Get ready to close this out. Let's go to the book of Psalms, chapter 20. Let's go to verse 1. <coughs> Salakia. Book of Psalms, chapter 20, verse 1. A psalm of David. The Lord hear thee in the day of trouble. The name of the God of Jacob defend thee. So Jacob's trouble is rapidly approaching. The Israelites are going to be in the crosshairs, surrounded on every side by the other nations. And the heathen starts with the rebels of the house of Israel. Verse 2, send thee help from the sanctuary and strengthen thee out of Zion. Remember all thy offerings and accept thy burnt sacrifice. So there's an elect that's going to be delivered in these times of trouble. That call and trust on the name of Yahweh Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, or Kwakadash. So then help is in the name and the faith in the doctrine. So there's a deliverer that's going to come out of the midst of the sanctuary that's dwelling with us now in spirit. This is how we're able to teach and be diligent. <clears throat> Let's go back to that. <coughs> Lock you. Psalms 20 and 2. Send thee help from the sanctuary and strengthen thee out of Zion. Remember all thy offerings and accept thy burnt sacrifice. So the sacrifice is of his servants, the saints, that are serving him daily and being diligent, trying to make our calling and election guaranteed to enter into the kingdom. But really... The, the jig is rigged because the Lord already knows who he's going to deliver. But we don't know that. So this is one of the reasons we serve in fear and trembling. We don't know for sure. Let's close out here. Psalms 94. <coughs> Book of Psalms, chapter 94. Let's go here to verse 14. For the Lord will not cast off his people, neither will he forsake his inheritance. So the Lord is preserving a faithful little sanctuary that we talked about. Israel is not done away with. The elect are crying out in sincerity and serving the Lord with fear and trembling. Verse 15, But judgment shall return unto righteousness, and all the upright in heart shall follow it. So those that are circumcised in the mind is going to be delivered, predetermined before the foundation of the world. Matter of fact, where is that at? Circumcise your heart. Let's try that. See if I can remember where it's at or get lost in the process. Let's go to Deuteronomy. I think it's Deuteronomy 10. <clears throat> Somewhere around verse 15. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 10. Let's go to verse 15. 
only the Lord had a delight in thy fathers to love them, and he chose their seed after them, even you above all people as it is this day. See, this is talking to us now, as it is this day. So there is a remnant according to the election of grace that he's dealing with in the last day. By the way, that scripture, Numbers 23 and 23, there was no enchantment against Jacob. That's the elect right now. The Lord is only dealing with the elect in these last days to fulfill prophecy. <clears throat> Numbers 10, excuse me, Deuteronomy 10 and 15. Only the Lord had a delight in thy fathers to love them, and he chose their seed after them, even you above all people as it is this day. Circumcise, therefore, the foreskin of your heart, and be no more stiff-necked. So this circumcision of the mind, being born again, be thinking ourselves and remembering the days of old that our forefathers encountered or experienced. So we're serving the Lord and seeking him diligently ten times more. Perfection, that ten represents perfection. <clears throat> what brought me here? I have no idea. Yeah, okay, let's go back. That heart. Yeah, right here. Psalms 94 and 15. But judgment shall return unto righteousness, and all the upright in heart shall follow it. <clears throat> A circumcised mind being born again, who will rise up for me against the evildoers, or who will stand up for me against the workers of iniquity? So those that are serving the Lord are doing that through these daily lessons and going out unto the, unto the highways and byways, <clears throat> putting their lives on the line, risking their life or making themselves a living sacrifice. That's who's doing that. The Lord does not ask a question that he, just, that he does not already know the answer to, <clears throat> who will rise up for me against the evildoers, or who will stand up for me against the workers of iniquity, unless the Lord had been my help, my soul had almost dwelt in silence. Without the Holy Spirit, we become dry bones, dead, no life running through us. Or wisdom, no breath of life. When I said, my foot slippeth, thy mercy, O Lord, held me up. We get mercy through Yahweh So we're being raised up in the last days through the Comforter, the Holy Spirit. In the multitude of my thoughts within me, thy comforts delight my soul. Shall the throne of iniquity have fellowship with thee, which frameth mischief by law? So when you have the Holy Spirit, the comforter, then this kingdom is distasteful, displeasing. It's vexing. <coughs> Everything about this system vexes us. Shall the throne of iniquity have fellowship with thee, which frameth mischief by a law? So they're creating a problem and then coming up with an off-the-shelf solution in every facet, politically, economically, medically, religiously. So they're creating order out of chaos, a fabrication of legislation, man-made catastrophes. They gathered themselves together 
against the soul of the righteous and condemn the innocent blood. So really, the elect is in their crosshairs of the dragon, the system. Jacob, and this is why it's Jacob's trouble. Trouble is going to come upon the world, but the major target are the Lord's people. That's why in 2 Ezra chapter 16, it says that they should come in like wild men against those that fear the Lord. <clears throat> but the Lord is my defense and my God is the rock of my refuge. So our sword and shield is Yahweh Bahashem Yehoshai, and his name is a strong tower. <clears throat> not guns. That's not going to save us. Our sword and our bow is not going to deliver us in these days. But faith in Yahweh Bahashem Yehoshai. But the Lord is my defense, and my power is the rock of my refuge. And he shall bring upon them their own iniquity, and shall cut them off in their own wickedness. Yea, the Lord our God shall cut them off. So he's going to bring a sword to cut off the workers of iniquity. He says, think not that I am come to bring peace on the earth, but a sword. And really, that sword starts with this word, pursuant to Hebrews 4 and 12. And it ends in literal destruction of the wicked. It's going to come upon their head. These nuclear missiles, followed by a whirlwind, of a fiery tempest from the chariots of the Lord, the so-called UFOs. I think we can end it there. So the world is tired and is in mourning. Enough is enough. This is absolutely ridiculous. Right now, there's about 40% of the women that are single mothers by design. Look up the video interview between Aaron Russo and Nick Rockefeller. Aaron Russo said, well, Nick Rockefeller said, why do you think we're pushing liber uh, women's liberation in the 1960s? Why do you think we did that? And... Aaron Russo said, oh, for equality and women's rights. And Nick Rockefeller said, you idiot. We wanted to tax both the father and the mother, divide the home, destroy the traditional family unit. And then we can indoctrinate the children to this new world or new age agenda. <coughs> And it's projected that by 2030, what was the numbers again? By 2030, it's about 65 or 75 percent of the women will be unmarried or single. I have to go back and relook the stats on that. It's about 70 percent that's projected to be single or unmarried. By 2030. <clears throat> anyway, hopefully this lesson has been edifying. Our praises to Yahweh, Bahashem Yahweh Shai, Bahashem Rakwan Kadash, Rakatam. See you on the next lesson, Lord willing. Kwam Yasharala, and the Ba the Ba. We got next, Lord willing. Shalom.